section, we'll be looking at creating backups with Rustic. So in Rustic, backups are called repositories. I'll go ahead and create a repository on my USB device here. So I'll go in here and open the terminal. And to create a repository, we use the init command or initialize repository. So we can come in here and do Rustic minus R and then name the backup or repository. Just like in the introduction video, I'll just call this backup media and then init. Rustic will now ask you for a password. When creating a new repository, you must specify the password. This password is part of Rustic's encryption and you mustn't forget the password. If you do, you will not be able to access the data. I'll go ahead and type in my password twice. It goes ahead and create the repository and then gives us this warning about our data being lost should we forget the password. Now this password is required anytime you need to access the backup. And throughout the series, you'll hear me refer to the repository as repository and backup. I'll be using both terms interchangeably. And in upcoming videos, I'll show you ways in which you can store the password so Rustic will automatically authenticate when you need to access the backup. But if we look in here, it created this folder called media and all of these other folders and files. Do not touch any of these files because modifying them may completely corrupt the backup. When you back up with Rustic, it creates snapshots inside the repository. These snapshots keep track of all file changes, so you can go back in time and restore older files. Let's go ahead and create our first snapshot. I'll clear the screen here. And we'll do Rustic minus R for repo on media. Notice I just type media here instead of e-media. That's because I'm already in the e-drive. So we could just type media and backup. I'm going to tell Rustic to backup my documents just like in the intro video. And that's going to be on C users tray documents. Ask for our password and then go ahead and backs up the documents folder. Gives us a report backed up 66 new files, 18 folders, and shows us the size. This is the size of the folder, and this is the size inside the repository with compression one. And it tells us the time it took. And now we have our first snapshot. The first backup will always take the longest depending on the amount of data, but subsequent backups will be much faster since REST is only backup new and modified files. You can list the snapshots in the repository using the snapshots command. Let's go ahead and bring back the command. And instead of running backup, we'll do snapshots. And this gives us information about all the snapshots. Snapshots will have a unique ID that we can use to reference when working with the repository. It gives us the date, time, the host or machine that backed up this data or snapshot, tags, which I will cover in future sections, and the path or what it backed up. I'll go ahead and modify one of my documents. I'll just remove one of these flags or Firefox in this text document and back up again. And this time the backup was near instant. One file was changed and we can see the size. We run snapshots. We see we now have two snapshots. Let's go ahead and add some more files to our backup. This time I'm going to include my music, pictures, and videos into the backup. Now we've adjusted the text so it's a little bit easier to see. So now we have our documents, music, pictures, and videos. And go ahead and back that up. Notice this message about no parent snapshot found. We'll read all files. When REST creates a snapshot, it uses a parent snapshot to reference from for subsequent backups. This helps speed up newer backups. Since my music, pictures, and videos weren't part of the original parent snapshot, Rustic had to go and create a new parent. If I do Rustic Snapshots, 
This was the first parent snapshot that only included our documents. Now that we've included the rest of these folders, it needed to create a new parent snapshot. The thing to keep in mind here is that it's not rebacking up the documents folder here. It's simply creating a new reference point. And this will make more sense to you later when we start looking at grouping snapshots. But when a new parent snapshot is created, it does have to reread all the files in the backup. Anytime the host machine changes or the path changes, a new parent will be created. Let's clear the screen here. Restix supports a testing feature called Dry Run. This allows you to test certain tasks before actually running them. Dry runs are most useful when testing backups and removing snapshots. I'm going to add some additional files here to my videos folder. And I'm going to run my backup again, but this time I'm going to apply the dry run option. Running this, Restic will go through the motions of backing up, but not actually back up any data. Instead, it tells us the results of what would happen if we ran the backup. A hundred something megs will be uploaded. We added three new files, changed four directories and so on. So let's go ahead and remove the dry run option and run the backup for real. And notice I'm using the same paths as before. So this backup will be much faster. And it's done. Next, I'd like to show you how to list files within a snapshot. If I do snapshots, let's go ahead and take a look at the files inside of our last snapshot. So I'll just copy the snapshot ID and then we'll use the ls command. In running this, it shows us all the files inside of this snapshot. If you wanted to see maybe what was in this snapshot, it just has our documents. Rustic has a special snapshot ID called latest. This latest snapshot ID can be used to reference the last snapshot ID in the repository or a group of snapshots. So instead of typing this snapshot ID to list the files, we could simply do ls on latest. And this would be the same as using this snapshot ID. So it's a little shortcut. If you wanted to see inside a specific folder, for example, we wanted to see only what was in the pictures folder or the music folder. Let's do music. We'll need to copy the path. And notice how Rustic formats these paths. So now all we'll have to do is do Rustic ls on latest, and I'll just copy the path that I want to look in. And we see just the files in our music folder. And let's do videos. And this shows us just the file inside of our videos folder. You can remove snapshots with the forget command. I'll go ahead and remove this first snapshot. So I'll copy the ID and do rustic on media. And we're going to do forget and specify the snapshot ID. We'll do dry run to see what happens. And it says it will remove the following snapshot. You want to get in the habit of using dry run, especially when you're going to be removing data from your backup. So let's go ahead and run the snapshots. As you can see, it removed one snapshot. And now we only have three snapshots. The snapshot is now gone. However, the data that was in the snapshot still remains in the repository. To actually delete the data, we use the prune command. And this tells us the amount of data that is actually going to remove when we run the prune command. And now the data that that first snapshot took up in the repository is permanently gone. 
So now you may be wondering what's the point of using the forget command if it doesn't actually delete any data. Forget is a much faster process and simply removes the reference point of the snapshot. The prune command is a more intensive, longer process depending on the size of the backup or files there is to remove. The forget command also has a prune option that lets you forget and prune snapshots at the same time. I'll go ahead and remove my latest snapshot. We'll do forget on latest and we'll use the prune option. This will forget the snapshot and remove its data permanently. You see it removed 100 megs. And now we just have two snapshots. If you don't prune the backup, the data will remain inside the repository and can actually be recovered as a new snapshot using the recover command. We'll look at the recover command in later sections. In the next section, we'll be looking at restoring data from a backup.